Hello peasants, my name is Louis Gudetti. I trained in Italy for six years to learn how to draw and paint in the academic style, which means I'm better than you and you should listen to me. Also, Smart, let me take you back to the caveman days. We wouldn't know these suckers existed if it wasn't for the cave drawings done in what? Dirt. And that's what I recommend. But if you don't want to draw in dirt, I'm better than you, here's what I recommend. I'll list the materials, and then I'll show you how to sharpen a pencil for drawing a high-class drawing. My goal is to get you on my level, where you can treat people like the peasants that they are because you have achieved a high level of artistic intellectual superiority. Let's begin. Drawing pencils by Kimberly. These are great pencils and made in America. Stiedler is also a good brand. To be honest, there are a lot of great brands out there and you really can't go wrong. The letters and numbers on the pencil simply indicate how hard or soft they are. H stands for hard, whereas B stands for black. H pencils are harder, which means you will get lighter lines, and the higher the number, the harder and lighter it will be. B pencils are softer, and the higher the number, the softer it will be. So for example, 6B is incredibly soft and dark, whereas 6H is incredibly hard and light. I normally use B pencils in the shadows and H pencils in the lighter areas. Next up is the kneaded eraser. These things are amazing, like my six pack. You can shape them into any shape which allows you to erase with deadly accuracy. When I draw, I always have one in my off hand so I can erase as a draw with my main hand. This actually saves me a ton of time and I get the drawing done way faster than I otherwise would. You can also clean it by stretching and folding it and it doesn't crumble when you erase it like a normal pencil eraser does. The next two go together, which is a sanding block and an X-Acto knife for sharpening your pencil. You can buy the sanding blocks for drawing I've listed in the description below, or you can make one, which is what I do, I'm so manly. All you need is a 2x4 or any small surface you can wrap and tape sandpaper to. I recommend a medium grade sandpaper. I prefer making my own because it gives me extra surface area to sharpen on, I'm smarter than you. I recommend an X-Acto knife with a handle so you can grip and control it better. Any type will work. Next up are the blending stumps. Because of my natural and raw talent, I don't use these, but I thought I would include them because it's something you, as a lesser being, will eventually come across, and I wanted to give my expert opinion on them. Some people blend their shadows with their fingers as a smoothing effect or as an initial layer before going back over it in pencil. This is fine, but sometimes the paper can absorb the grease from the fingers, which will cause yellowing. Blending stumps are a healthier alternative for this reason. They also come in different sizes so you can get places your fingers can't, Next we have the pencil extender. So I haven't figured out how these things work yet, but I think I'm close. These are totally optional and I myself don't use them, but I might start. They're excellent for getting the most out of your pencils and can ultimately save you some money in buying new ones if you care about money, which I don't because I have so much of it as a painter. Finally, we have the Strathmore sketchbook. I prefer the 9x12 fine tooth, but honestly, it's whatever you prefer. And buying a sketchbook, get one with the coolest cover. That's number one. Number two, you want to pay attention to whether or not it says acid free. If it is, the paper will not yellow over time. Mind you, for sketched paper, when I'm out of the studio, it really doesn't matter. I draw on whatever I can find I'm talented. At the end, you can spray your drawing down if you don't want it to be smudged later on. I use the fixative from Pryline, though I'm not picky about it. As long as it says it's for pencils, you're good. A fixative will have what medium it is used for on the bottle. There are two types of fixative, workable and final. Workable is lighter and you can continue drawing on top of it while final is heavier and is only used at the final stage. Now I use workable fixatives and even after I use this, I don't continue drawing on my drawings once they have been sprayed. I have found a layer or two of workable fixative is enough to secure the graphite on the paper. Just be careful not to overspray your drawings, especially if you're using final fixative because it could alter the drawing's appearance if you do. And this is how I sharpen my pencil for drawing. I take the pencil and the X-Acto knife and stand by the trash can. Starting a bit less than two inches from the tip of the graphite, I shave the wood off in thin layers. Don't take huge chunks out because this oftentimes results in breaking the lead or having an uneven carving of wood. Once the wood is shaved in a gradual slope, I expertly sand the tip of the lead into a point. There are several advantages to sharpening in this manner. The first being that you will have way more control over the quality of your lines. Second, the pencil will stay sharper longer because you can actually sharpen as you draw. Simply rotate the pencil slightly as you feel the point diminishing and you will find the new edge to be sharper. Eventually, you will need to resharpen, and the softer the pencil, the more often this will be the case. The third advantage is you can use the side of the graphite to shade if you prefer. With these materials, you should have no problem slaying your enemies and proving your artistic dominance to the poor souls who are unfortunate enough to stand in your way. Video done.